Did you know <clears throat> that the United States Air Force in 1980 came that close to nuking Arkansas? Alright, so if you take all the bombs dropped by all the countries during World War II, combine them all together, add the two nuclear weapons that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, then take that amount and multiply it by three, and you have a nine, almost ten, megaton nuclear warhead. Now, take one of those, drop it about 45 miles outside of Little Rock, Arkansas in 1980. Add Vice President Walter Mondale and future President Bill Clinton and you have a recipe for disaster. This is the warhead that I'm talking about. It sits on top of a Titan II 110 foot missile. And just think, there were 18 of these scattered throughout the north central Arkansas area in, 1990, in 1980. In a little town called Damascus, on September 18, 1980, one of these Titan II missiles exploded inside its silo. It wasn't until the next day that they found this part of the warhead lying in a ditch beside the road. Now the nose cone you just saw is an actual real nose cone from a uh, Titan II missile. That particular nose cone came from Missile Silo 373-8 and uh, that's uh, Southside is the local community there and uh, it has now, of course there's no nuclear warhead in it anymore, it's just the nose cone and it is now a uh, time capsule that will be opened up in 2037. Um, be interesting to see what they've got in it because it was taken offline and made into a time capsule in 1987. The incident that we're talking about happened in Damascus, Arkansas, which was silo number 373-7. And it happened on September 18th, 1980. Walter Mondale had come to Little Rock, Arkansas on that same day to visit with then Governor Bill Clinton and while they were meeting at Little Rock, the silo at Damascus reported that the fuel tank for its Titan II missile was showing low on pressure. Now. There are two, two separate tanks on a Titan II missile. You have your fuel and you have your oxidizer. And if the two mix, there doesn't even have to be a spark involved. The two items mixing, period, sets off an explosive chain reaction. And the Titan II missile in its design used those two tanks as part of the structural stability. So if one tank starts losing pressure, it can actually cave in on itself. And if that happens, 
it's going to be a catastrophic explosion just simply due to the fact that the two contents are going to mix. About 2,500 yards from here, just past that barn on the other side of the tree line there, is the site of Air Force Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Silo 374-7, Damascus. At 6.30 in the evening on September 18, 1980, the control operators reported that the hydrazine tank in the second stage of the rocket was showing a decrease in pressure. So a PTS propellant transfer team came up from Little Rock Air Force Base and they proceeded to check the levels and they used what had previously been approved to, uh, socket wrench to get into the system and that socket according to Air Force instructions had recently been uh, done away with and they were to use a torque wrench trying to save time they went ahead and used the socket the socket was a nine pound socket and during the use of that socket they dropped it it fell 80 feet hit a launch buckle and it ricocheted off the launch buckle onto uh, the side of the of the rocket it pierced the skin and pierced the fuel tank the fuel started leaking out and so at that time the PTS team reported back to the control group that there was a problem. During the night Air Force personnel and local civilians tried to mitigate the situation and everything just kept going wrong and at three o'clock in the morning everybody had been evacuated and a separate PTS team consisting of Airman Livingston and Sergeant Kennedy uh, were ordered to go in and, and take atmospheric uh, gas test to see what the levels concentration of fuel was in the air in the silo. When they, when they did that they saw that it was uh, such a high level that their suits could actually be melted off of them. They were ordered to evacuate. Just a few minutes later, it was decided that Livingston would go back in and he would try and turn on the vent fans to vent the fuel out uh, because the concern was as soon as the fuel tank became empty, the rocket would collapse in on itself and the hydrazine oxidizer would be released at that time and if mixed with the fuel it would spontaneous combust uh, which would amount to a huge explosion and sitting on top of this ICBM was a nine megaton nuclear warhead about the time that Livingston entered the silo it collapsed and the, their worst fears were brought to life the rocket exploded totally demolishing the silo and the launch control rooms and everything. Uh, Livingston later died that night at the hospital and Kennedy uh, suffered severe uh, wounds that night as well but he went on to survive. They looked for the warhead all night long because what happened was when it collapsed and exploded it sent the second stage and the warhead into the air. Once it cleared the silo, the second stage exploded, thus propelling the warhead even further. They found it the next day 
uh, 100 feet past the gate uh, by the road um, in a ditch. Luckily, the, the safety systems of the warhead itself had kept any leak of radiation and any damage to the warhead to a minimum, uh, leaking no radiation, uh, but the warhead was damaged. Uh, it was later taken in an eight truck convoy from here back to the uh, Little Rock Air Force Base and uh, to the 308 uh, Strategic Air Command. The property now has been uh, uh, turned over to private and um, you can't even get there. Uh, that's why I'm not there now checking on it. Um, and it's too windy for me to put the drone up in the air. Otherwise, it'd be over there because I did bring it with me. Um, it's been covered up with concrete, gravel, and soil. You can still see, if you go on Google Maps and then switch to satellite, uh, you can actually see uh, the area and you can see where it used to be uh, but right but now it's just looks like any other piece of property that's got a lot of gravel on it